Will you please welcome Randy Gay? So what do you do when your dream dies? Do you sit down and cry? Do you give it up and let it die? Or do you give it one more try? Let me tell you what it, the way it worked for me. I came to work one morning about 11 o'clock. There were two agents, the two people sitting in a car waiting for me, and I got there. And see, what had happened, let me tell you the preview to this. I had a restaurant, bought it with a partner of mine. We kind of bootstrapped the thing. Didn't really have enough money to, to, to start it like we should have. And we tried to grow it as best we could, but we didn't pay the taxes, you know, and we struggled by and borrowed from this account to that account and this account to that account. And, uh, eventually I bought him out and I sent a letter to the IRS, who's the tax agency there in the States, and said, I'm the new owner here, we've had some problem with taxes, I want to make this right, let's work out a payment plan, and I never heard anything for three months. So I, and I sent a check in there, here's a deposit, thousand dollars, good faith. Didn't hear anything for three months, so I sent another check, another letter. Never heard a thing for a couple of months until that morning they're waiting on the car you missed a gauge yes I'm agent so-and-so this is agent so-and-so we're here from the Internal Revenue Service we have your letters here we have your files here and uh, we notice you know you have fifteen thousand dollars in back taxes so we need that money there's a 100 percent penalty because they were not filed so that's thirty thousand and then there's the late fees and the interest payment and the this and the that. And we need $37,000 today or we're going to seize your restaurant. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I must have left my checkbook at home. <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, so the, uh, I called them my lawyer. I called my accountant. I, you know... It, no, they all said the same thing. There's nothing you can do, Randy. They, you know, you've got to work something out with these people. And I remember hiring a consultant who used to be an IRS agent, and she negotiated with him. She called me one day, and she said, Randy, we're at the end of the road. Uh, the way they keep compliance is they have to set some examples sometimes, and you had a busy delivery business, and they saw those cars going all the time with the signs on them, and they need to make examples, and, and they just want to make you an example. And so they auctioned off the, the place on the courthouse steps, half a million dollar a year operation. They auctioned it off for $11,000. And I couldn't beg, borrow, or steal $11,000 to get it out of hock, so that was the end of my dream. And I remember driving along in the car that day, uh, not even my car, because I didn't have a car anymore. I remember driving along in my friend's car and crying in the car, thinking, I have to call my mother and tell her this. I have to tell my friends this. I mean, I'm, I was so ashamed. I was so humiliated. I, I mean, I, I didn't know what I could do. How, you know, how was I going to tell people that I had lost my business? And between the 37000 I owed those guys and then the money I owed for the vendors, I mean, whatever money I had left that day, I took and paid off the employees and said... This is the last check you're going to get, so, you know, do what you can with it. And uh, that left me $55,000 U.S., uh, $55,000 in debt. No house, no car, no credit cards, no job. And uh, what do you do in a situation like that? Well, when, when you have your dream. And see, that was the biggest dream I had at that point in my life. 
because as you heard from Ford, I'm a high school dropout. I started off as a dishwasher in a pancake house. And then I worked my way up to cook, and then I became a waiter, and then I was a manager trainee, and I thought, boy, if I could just be a restaurant manager, that would be, I could wear a tie, I'd go around with a coffee pot, how's your dinner this evening, everything okay? You know, I thought, oh, this would be it, until I got that job. And then I realized I worked 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week for a fixed salary. And, you know, the, and then I became like the, the problem store manager and they sent me around to different cities whenever they had a store losing money. They would send me there and it was my job there to go and be the turnaround guy. So I'd go in and work on the payroll, work on the food costs, the controllable expenses, make the thing profitable and they'd send me somewhere else. I lived in 18 cities in five years. So think what kind of home life you have, what kind of friends. You don't have any friends, you don't, you know, because people stop calling you. Because every time they call you, you're always working. And you never go to the movies, and you never go to dinner, and you never go anywhere, so they just stop calling you. And your work becomes your life. And I know we've got people in this room tonight, and people watching on this film today, who are going through the same thing. We get out of balance. We get so busy chasing our income, we forget about living life. We forget about living our dreams. So anyway, that was my dream, I thought, to, to run a restaurant until I got it. And then I said, wow, this is crazy. I'm working for I'm minimum wage here. When I divide all these hours I'm working with what I'm doing, I know what i got to do. I need to own my own restaurant. That would be the dream. And that's the great American dream, of course, and back in the States, is you get your own business and you start it up. And so that's what I did. And I saved my money and I work hard and I played by the rules and I did all the stuff you're supposed to do and I got that restaurant until that day when it all ended like that. And all of a sudden, where do you go when you, when, when you don't have that dream anymore? And, you know, in my case, I had to back up and, and, I, and I'll talk about that in a sec, but I, I don't want to talk about me tonight. I want to talk about you tonight. I want to talk about your dream. I mean the big dreams, the bold, daring, imaginative ones you had. The ones you had when you were 15 years old and 18 years old, 20 years old. Because you know what I see? I see people give up on their dreams. And it seems the older we get, the more we give up on our dreams. And you know, talk to any kid who's 15 years old and they know they're going to have a great car when they grow up and a great house and a great job and a wonderful spouse and they're going to be rich and they're going to be successful and they're going to be an astronaut or a football star or a rock star or whatever, right? There's no limits to what they can dream. And what happens along the way? They get out, they go to school, they get out as 22, 23 years old, all of a sudden they take a job they don't really want. It's not their dream job, but they figure it'll do for right now. And then they, maybe they find out about another job, and that's not their dream job, but it's a little more money than the last one. And they meet someone along the way, and da -da -da, da -da -da. all of a sudden there's two, and then there's a little baby on the way, and there's another baby, and then there's diapers and formula and braces and all of those kind of thing. And all of a sudden they take another job that's uh, 500 miles away, and begin, but again it pays a few thousand dollars more a year, so they take that job. And all of a sudden you're 35 years old, you're 45 years old, you're 55 years old, and you forgot about your dreams. That's what tonight is, not, is about. I know you heard it's a business opportunity. Nah, it's a dream opportunity. How to get your dreams back. I know this because I like sports cars. Some of you all know me. <laughs> you know I got a car thing going on. And it's funny, I'll be sitting at the light in one of my Vipers, let's say, and some car will pull up next, and there'll be a guy driving there, and he's got his two, three kids in there in the back, and they'll roll down the window, hey, Mr. Viper, man, cool car, man, and, you know, rev the engine up, I can't wait, when I grow up, I'm going to get a Viper. And kids say that to me all the time. I grow up, I'm going to get a Viper. Now, Dad, Dad doesn't say that. <laughs> he just sitting there behind the wheel, because... See, Dad's already grown up. And he figured out he ain't getting the Viper. He's got the minivan. Hey. Right? 
What happened along the way? You know, because, and it's funny, every, every year they publish the list of the most popular cars. And I see it every year, and it comes out. And I read the list, and it's funny. Now, when I talk to kids, and I talk to a lot of kids, they're, you know, they always like cars. And they yeah, I'm going to get a Corvette, I'm going to get a Lamborghini, I'm going to get a Ferrari. And then when they publish this list of the best-selling cars, it's Toyota, Camrys, and Holdens, and Mercury's, and Ford Escorts, and Geo Metros, the broke mobiles. <laughs> right? These are, because, see, these are all cars they make for broke people. You see that? Like the Holdens you got here. <laughs> and the Toyotas we got there, and the Chevys we got there, and the Buicks we got there. They make those things for broke people. Now how come when I see the list of the top ten things, I don't see Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Rolls Royce and Jaguar and Bentley? Because they gave up on their dreams. They said, well, this is the car we got. It's room for the car seat in the back, and we can afford the payments. And they settle for a car. And they settle for a house. And they settle for a job. And they settle for a life of quiet desperation. When they could be living a life of joy, challenge, growth, <coughs> adventure, and prosperity. That's what tonight's about. I want you to think about, really, here's the, the challenge I would give you. I want you to think of five things you would do, have, or become if money was no object. I mean, really think about this, okay? You don't have to write it down. I just want you to think about it. But think about it. If, if you had Bill Gates's kind of money, if you had Larry Ellison's kind of money, if you were one of these dot-com billionaires, would you be driving the car you're driving right now that you got here today? In? How many people, if, tell the truth now, if money was no object, how many people would have a different car in the parking lot tonight? Okay. Now, if money was absolutely no object, you had 30, 40, 50, 60 billion dollars, how many people would have a different roof over their head when they went home tonight? How many people have a better wardrobe? Ladies, how many of you would have bigger closets? <laughs> right? Yeah. So this tells me something. This tells me you do have dreams and you want to live them or you wouldn't be sitting here tonight. See, most of Australia tonight, most of New Zealand tonight, most of the United States, UK, everywhere where they're watching this video, they're not, most people aren't gathered like this. Most people are sitting on a recliner, rubbing the hair off the back of their head, <laughs> drinking rancid fermented hops, watching the idiot box. Six hours a day. And this is their life. Monday morning, 6.30. The alarm clock goes off. And they get, oh, hit the snooze bar. If I could just get 15 more minutes. And they wait 15 more minutes. And they hit the snooze bar again. And they get 10 more. And then they got to get up. And they rush in the shower. And they drop and jump in the car. And they buy their breakfast through a drive through somewhere. And then they go to a job they don't like or actually hate. 85% of them, a job they don't like or actually hate, and they get through Monday till 5 o'clock or 5.30 or 6 o'clock, and then they go out and they face the traffic going home. They probably get drive through dinner somewhere, dinner in a bucket to take home to the kids, get in front of the idiot box and sit there in a coma till they fall asleep, <laughs> or they crawl into bed, until Tuesday morning, 6.30, it starts all over again. Wednesday, hump day. Thursday, we're almost there. Thank goodness it's Friday. Because you know what Friday means, right? Because Friday means somewhere near the end of the day, the boss is going to say, hey, here boy, here boy. They're going to get out that little paycheck, and they're going to get that paycheck. And for one brief moment in time, it's going to feel like it's theirs. <laughs> but we know it isn't theirs, is it? 
because they got all those little window envelopes from the credit card company just waiting for them. And that money is spent long before it, got, before it ever got there. But for this one brief moment in time, it feels like theirs. So I don't know what they do here in Sydney, but I know what they do in the States. They go out to Pizza Hut. <laughs> All right, so it's off to Pizza Hut for a deep dish meat lovers, extra cheese, extra meat, but you know, Diet Pepsi because I'm trying to hold my weight, you know. And uh, off to the Pizza Hut, and then it's off to the neighborhood video store where they buy three rent rather three, four, five, six, eight, even ten videos to get them through the weekend and they will spend their entire weekend sitting on that same recliner rubbing that same hair off the back of that same head drinking the same rancid fermented hops in a coma all weekend long video after video after video so they don't have to think about their life of quiet desperation until Monday morning 6.30 <clears throat> when it starts all over again this is life for a lot of people. This is life for millions of people. They're missing out on the real life. They're missing out on the real joy. And I don't want that for you. I didn't come 12,000 miles here to tell you what you want to hear. I can't tell you what I think you need to hear. We got a business here. It offers you a chance with unlimited income potential. It's a business to help you be successful while you're helping other people reach success. You choose the hours you work. You pick the people you get to work with. I mean, do you know what a joy that is? <laughs> Just to be able to pick the people instead of those slobs you're working with. <laughs> right? I mean, that, the tax advantages are extraordinary. The travel opportunity, if you're like me and you love to travel the world, the travel opportunities in this business are simply amazing. Okay? So what's it take to do the business? Well, it doesn't take a lot of money. This is a very low startup cost business. It doesn't take a lot of time. This is a business you can start in seven to ten hours a week. And what I'm going to share with you tonight is a two to four year plan. So you say, is this a get-rich-quick scheme? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Okay, because anything that can get you rich in two to four years is a get-rich-quick scheme, as far as I'm concerned. Because what are most people doing? They're doing the 45-year plan, which is they get a job around 20 years old, they work for 45 years at that dead-end job they don't like or actually hate, and retire around 65 years old, and try to get, get, live their golden years on half of what they couldn't get by on when they worked. <laughs> Do you get that? You know, your retirement's about half of what, you know, and I've been in uh, all the country I've been in, I can't tell you how many different countries, and I've been in socialistic countries and free enterprise countries and everything in between, and I can tell you the retirement security, it's the same in all those places. Your golden years, if you're counting on the government to take care of you, if you're counting on pensions to take care of you, you're looking at living your golden years on 50% uh, of what you can't get by on right now. So if your idea of your golden years is walking your poodle around the block, good luck to you. <laughs> But if you think you're going to travel the world and go see your grandkids and live a wonderful life, a leisure, you better take a very good look at what we're, we've got to show you tonight. Because you've got to control your own destiny. You've got to control your own income. You've got to control your own retirement security. And that's one of the biggest uh, benefits of this business. So it's a two to four year plan. It takes seven to ten hours a week. It doesn't take a lot of money. So what does it take? It takes the dream. Because if you don't have the dream, you'll never find the seven to ten hours a week. I can guarantee you that. You're busy. We're all busy. You're working. You're picking up the dry cleaning. You're making dinner. You're taking the kids to football practice. You're paying the bills. You've got to sleep. You've got to eat. All this. You're using 24 hours of every day already. So what's got to give? You've got to find a dream. Something that will take you to this frame of mind where you will change the way you live, you will change the daily actions you take, and you will change your mindset for a two to four year period. 
So you, that alarm clock will get off, go off at 6.30 in the morning. You'll get up, you'll have your breakfast, you go to work, you'll work eight or nine hours at your job, you'll get out of the job, you'll run somewhere, grab a bite to eat, and go somewhere and work for another three hours in the evening. When you could be home watching TV, when you could be with your kids, when you could be with your family, when you could be watching a football game or something else. But you will make a sacrifice. You will say, I will find the seven to ten hours a week for two to four years to build my freedom, to build my security, to build my independence. And don't tell me, ladies, well, I can't do that because of my kids. Let me tell you what I say to that. Don't use your kids as an excuse not to do the business. Use your kids as the reason to do the business. So you can raise your own kids instead of paying someone else to raise them for you. You know, I mean, people drop the kids off at a daycare center at 7.30 in the morning and pick them up at 5 o'clock at night. Those poor kids couldn't pick their mother out of a police lineup. <laughs> Right? Don't use your religion as an excuse. Let me tell you, I missed a lot of church for a couple of years while I built my business. I was doing meetings on Wednesday nights instead of going to church on Wednesday night. Some Sundays I was in a different city working with a long distance line instead of being at church. But you know what happened? I tithe 10% of every penny I make to my church. And I make a lot of pennies these days. Okay, some Sundays, we, we seat 800 in my church. You know, some Sundays, they put that basket around and it starts here and it goes all the way down the aisles, all that just like that. And you know, sometimes the check that I put in there equals the checks of 799 other people all added together. That's what missing a few days at church did for me. Gave me time to serve on the board of the church two years as the president. A couple years more as the Blue Ribbon Committee. I've been able to contribute to the church. I've been able to teach a class on prosperity and that. See, I couldn't do that when I was broke. Do you really get that? You can't do these kind of things when you're broke. You can't help your kids when you're broke. Well, you're so busy trying to pay the bills. You're so busy trying to cover the mortgage. You're so busy trying to pay the rent. You can't live life. And that's not the way life is meant to be lived. I came here because I want you to have an amazing life like I have. And I believe me, I have an amazing life. I live in my dream home. I live on the ocean, okay? I go to bed every night. I hear those waves crashing on the shore. I wake up, I go down, and I got a beautiful car to get into. I have beautiful people in my life. I have wonderful health. I, you know, everything is, you know, I make more money every year than I did the, the year before. I am living a dream that is, that, uh, is, is just wonderful. But I made some sacrifices along the way. And that's what I'm saying to you. Make some sacrifices. Take two to four years. Make a commitment. When you, when you walk out of here tonight, make that commitment. Not to your spouse, not to your sponsor, not to me, not to, any, to yourself. Make a commitment to yourself that you're worthy, that you're worth it, that you will think back. And that's what I want you to really do is say, okay, what were your dreams when you were 15? What, what is the house you would live in if money is no object? Do you have a picture of it somewhere that you carry around to, to fuel you? What is the dream car you want to be driving? Is it a red Lamborghini Diablo? Ferrari Testarossa? Bentley? Viper? You know, what is it? Do you have a picture of it in your wallet? You got a picture of it in your planner? You have a dream board with it up somewhere? You got it up on the mirror in the bathroom? You got it up on the refrigerator in the kitchen? You know, how much time you want to spend with, with the loved ones in your life? How much money you want to give to charity? You know, I had lunch. Funny, I just got invited to be on the board of directors for the, the Florida Philharmonic. I'm so honored they asked that, and I'm, I'm proud to be a supporter of them. I'm so proud to be a supporter of the opera and the young artist program, all kind of charities. Fascinating thing, though. I had lunch with the guy who invited me to be on the board. He gave a million dollars to the Philharmonic this year. A million dollars. So they can play beautiful music. That's money. That's money with a capital M. <laughs> That's living a life of dreams. That's living a life of wonder, of joy, of adventure and growth. And that's what I want for you. But you've got to know what that is. 
So please, those five things, what would they be? And maybe you're going to give a million dollars to your church, temple, or synagogue. Maybe it's you want to take a year off and study ballet. Maybe you want to take six months and go on a cruise around the world. Maybe you want to fly in all your family from all over the world and have a reunion. Maybe you want a house in Paris and a house in Hawaii and a house in San Diego and a house in, in uh, Berlin. I, you know, I don't know what it is for you. But you have to know what it is. Or nothing I'm going to talk about tonight is going to make any sense to you. You'd be better sitting home watching Survivor, Big Brother, Fear Factor, you know, whatever one of those shows. You could sit watching any one of those shows instead of be here tonight. Because if you're here tonight, you've got to know what your dream is. And we can show you. I will draw out on this board. I will draw out a way and show you how you can live those dreams. And I'll show you how to build some residual income, some retirement security. And you can just do the numbers yourself. Okay? And you could say, all right, is there any of those five things that I would do, have, or become that I can get with what I see here on this board? The difference is, and here's the secret. Okay? You wonder, okay, I know there's nothing for free. There's always a cost. Here's the thing. Here's the secret of everything I'm going to talk about tonight has to do with leverage. It's getting you out of the trap. And there's a big trap, okay? And this is the trap. It's people trading time for money. You work 40 hours, you get paid for 40 hours. So you make, you work 40 hours and you get paid $400 a week. If you only, if you're sick half a day and you only work 35 hours, you get paid 350. If you need some extra money because there's something that you want to do, you put in some overtime so you work 45 hours so maybe you get 450. Well, you know what? That is trading time for money. Time for money. Hours for dollars. Hours for pounds. Hours for tolars. Hours for cougar rands. Whatever the currency is. If you're trading time for currency, you can't get wealthy. It's a trap. You got to put some leverage to work somehow to get out of that. Because this is what keeps people broke. So in my case, when I lost my dream, and I started all over again. I said, well, I got a choice here. I can go and live like most people do and live that life of quiet desperation and just mind my own business and do the thing and be a worker drone in the collective like everybody else. Or I can go after my dreams again. So I began a study of prosperity. Because when you're $55,000 in debt, no house, no car, no credit cards, and you start selling the furniture, things look a little different. <laughs> Anybody here ever sell your furniture for your business? Interesting scenario. Here's what I found. The, uh, the end tables, not a problem. Coffee table, no big deal. Kitchen table, hey, you can always eat in the, in the sofa. Lamps, no big deal. You got, the, you got the light in the kitchen on the ceiling. But the sofa <laughs> and the bed and the TV. TV. <laughs> How did I know you'd know that? The bed, the sofa, and the TV. They got to be the last to go. Because see, I don't know if you got it here, but what we have in the States, we have infomercials on all night long. So once midnight hits, these infomercials start, and they're all about how to make money. So what do you do when you're $55,000 in debt and you're sleeping, you know, with no furniture and whatever? You sit up all night and you watch infomercials. And, this, and then you sleep all day and you're so depressed and you get up and you read the one ads and you think you don't have a bus fare to go to the job interview and you think how miserable your life is and you eat macaroni and cheese three times a day, which is what I did for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I'd get up, sleep, mope around, eat my macaroni and cheese, and then midnight would start the infomercials. And I remember we had a guy, a Vietnamese guy named Tom Vu. I don't know if you ever saw that here, this infomercial. He had one of those co courses on how to buy real estate, no money down. So one night, it's 3 a.m., I'm sitting on the sofa. Tom Vu comes on. He says, you, sitting on the sofa! <laughs> You! It's 3 a.m. Now I know he's really worried because it's 3 a.m. I'm sitting on his own. He said, You sitting on his own at 3 a.m.? Your wife's asleep? Your baby's asleep? You are a loser! <laughs> no! 
nobody cares about you, you a loser. If you don't buy my program, you deserve to be broke. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, if only I could afford this bro. But of course, I didn't have the $199 or whatever it was. So, and eventually, of course, the sofa had to go, the bed had to go, and then the TV had to go. And then something else had to go. And that was my mindset. My victim, loser, woe is me. Oh, the circumstances are against me. That mindset had to go. And I had to say, okay, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I am sick of being broke. I am sick of being sick. I am sick of being stupid. I'm sick. Of, you know, the truth is I wasn't even broke, okay? Because I would have needed $55,000 to qualify for broke. <laughs> okay? I would have been happy to be broke at that point in my life. Okay? At that point, I would have been happy to have an alarm clock going off at 6.30 waking me up. Now, is that the dumbest invention you ever heard, though, an alarm clock? You're supposed to wake up when you finish sleeping. But, right, what do we do? We stuck in the thing. So now at this point, I wouldn't have been happy with an alarm clock. Okay, but I started a study of prosperity. And here's what I found, two secrets of prosperity. If you want to be wealthy, secret number one, you have to be your own boss. You ain't going to get rich working for other people. You know, if you've got to get a job as president of Disney Studios or, uh, you know, IBM calls you up and wants you to be the vice president of operations, maybe you're going to make a lot of money. All I know is those people weren't calling me, okay? <laughs> and they may not be calling you, okay? <laughs> So if those people ain't calling you, you want to get wealthy, you got to be your own boss. Because let me tell you a secret, I don't care how nice your boss is, I don't care how much your boss loves you and wants to help you. The truth is, they have to buy you at wholesale and sell you at retail. Otherwise they don't make money and they don't stay in business. So the only way they make money off you is to buy you at wholesale and sell you at retail. So if you want to make money, you got to be able to get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and know that you're talking to the boss. And issue number two, and this is the, the most important thing, which we mentioned, you've got to employ the concept of leverage. And this is something, J. Paul Getty, who was one of the wealthiest people the world ever known, he understood this. And he was quoted oftentimes, this is probably his most famous quote, when he said, I would rather have 1% of the efforts of a hundred people than 100 percent of my own efforts because he understood the concept of leverage and he became one of the wealthiest people the world has ever known so tonight I'm going to share with you how you can employ this same concept of leverage that the wealthiest people in the world do and it allow you to get your share of that kind of wealth and I'm happy to say, I'm one of the wealthiest people in the world. You know that? Now, you know what? I don't have uh, Bill Gates' money. I don't have Larry Ellison's money. I couldn't spend $90 million on a boat down in the Kiwi race there next week. <laughs> but you know what? I'm one, if there's 6 billion people, whatever there is on this planet, I'm wealthier than 5,990,000, you know, whatever, 99.8% of them. And I'm a dishwasher from a pancake house. <laughs> but I understood leverage. Now, how do you put this leverage? It's a business called network marketing, sometimes called multi-level marketing. Sometimes we call it MLM for short. What is it? It's a business that allows you to leverage the efforts of other people who have a dream and are willing to trade that seven to ten hours a week to get a dream. So you're going to introduce them to the business, you're going to teach them a duplicatable system that they could follow and duplicate the same results with people that they're going to introduce to the business and create this system that everybody can follow and everybody will get a nice chunk of the organization that is built. And because you direct your own organization, because you are your own boss, you get some residual income out of the efforts of the people that you introduce to the business. That's the leverage. 
It's no different than when Madonna makes a record and they, every time they play that CD, she gets a royalty of that. When uh, Coppola does a movie and that movie plays, it gets a royalty of that. This is how the average person can get leverage. See, if you got money, leverage is not a problem. You can leverage your money. You can buy stocks, bonds, invest in companies, invest in real estate, all that kind of stuff. I couldn't do that. If you, you know, you could buy a franchise. If I would have bought a restaurant franchise instead of opening my own restaurant, chances are I'd still be in the restaurant business. But you know what? I couldn't afford the franchise fee. I didn't have that kind of money. You know, ask someone about the stock market, they'll tell you, unless you got $25,000 you can afford to lose, don't even get in the stock market. Well, I didn't have $25,000 I could afford to lose. I didn't have $25 I could afford to lose. <laughs> Forget about So I didn't have the money to leverage. And if you got a couple hundred thousand, a couple million you can leverage, hey, maybe you don't even need to be here tonight. But I'm sp speaking to the rest of you who don't have that kind of money. And the rest of you who used to have that kind of money till the stock market tanked, <laughs> and now your, your retirement fund is 40% uh, of what it was two years ago. Okay, let's talk about how you build your security. Well, so what is network marketing? It's just a new, new paradigm of distribution. Been around for over 50 years now. And it is, why I say it's a new paradigm of distribution is because it's changing the way we get products and services to the consumer. And with things that have happened recently, like the internet, overnight shipping, satellite, telephone, fax technology, all of this stuff is driving network marketing to be a bigger force today than it has ever been. So it's been growing consistently for more than 50 years. There are somewhere between 14 to 16 million people in the network marketing direct selling industry. And it will do somewhere between 70 and 80 billion dollars US this year. So this is a very credible business. And if you've been reading the financial papers the last few years, you've seen it mentioned in the Wall Street Journal, had uh, you know, front page cover stories on Success Magazine, uh, Forbes Magazine, the mainstream press is really starting to pick up on this. Now why is that happening? Is because it, it, it's, it's the future, it's what has to be because what, is, what has happened in the past doesn't work anymore. In other words, here's how it used to work in distribution. We'd have a manufacturer, they would make a product, they would sell it to a wholesaler who would buy it, resell it to a rack jobber, who would buy it, resell it to a retail chain. They would buy it, send it to a warehouse somewhere, sits in a dusty warehouse for six weeks, and then it gets transferred by a truck, maybe it goes to the store, and then you come in the store and you buy this product. Well, they had to make money, they had to make money, they did, they did, they did. You have all these parasites who were taking money out of your product. I say, why am I calling all those people parasites? Well, it's not that they're, nice, they're not nice people. It's just that made sense a hundred years ago. It doesn't make sense today. Because today, we can have a network marketing company manufacture a product and send it direct to a distributor who in many cases is the end consumer and in other cases is just conversationally marketing the products with their friends, neighbors, and relatives and we eliminate all these other people in the middle. So look at the difference. This made sense a hundred years ago. Something came by boat over here, maybe it went from California, it went on a ship, came to the east coast here, and then it was transported across Australia over to the outback. It was the same thing with us. We used to get stuff from England, and it would land in Boston or New York, and then it would go by stagecoach across the country, and then it went by train, and then it went by truck, and you had, this is the only way it worked. This is all we knew. Then we got fax machines, we got the internet, we got Federal Express, UPS, overnight delivery, we got 800 telephone numbers, we got fax machines. All of a sudden, this doesn't work anymore, it's a broken model. Why do you think so many businesses have been in bankruptcy in the last five years? And I mean big name, 100, 200 year old companies, retailing giants like Macy and, and Stalwart said that, you know, we would think have been around forever. They went into bankruptcy court. Why? Because they have a broken distribution model. This is the model of today. This is the model of the future. And with what we're doing now with internet and 800 numbers and ordering, this is going to get just bigger and bigger and bigger. So what this does is this allows you an opportunity to participate on a new paradigm of distribution. 
I want you to think when fortunes were made. They're made in revolutions. The agricultural revolution made a bunch of rich landowners. The industrial revolution made a bunch of rich factory owners and business owners. If you think of Carnegie, uh, uh, the steel, uh, the Amico people, the Standard Oil people, the Henry Ford and the Chryslers. And think of all the old money today. It all came from the, the, the families we know today. It came from the Industrial Revolution. So now we have the Distribution Revolution. So what this means is that 50 years, 75 years from now, there's going to be a meeting at a hotel somewhere in Sydney, Australia, and they're going to say, think about the old money today, the gauge money, <laughs> the Hawkins money, the, your money, and say that was made in the distribution revolution. Because they saw the power of the internet, overnight shipping, fax machines, 800 number, and how to put all this together into the new paradigm of distribution. This is what we're in right now. And I believe the next two years is going to be the biggest years of growth in the history of the industry. And you could be a part of it. Well, your income 40 years from now is going to be present on what you do for the next two years. Now notice we have all this money that got wasted before. Where did it go? Well, there's two places it goes. Number one, it goes to product research and development. And I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. And the other place it goes is right here to you, the distributor. The people who actually get involved with the business. All this money that you can see. Sometimes you could go to the store, you could buy a box of cereal for $3.50. The actual cereal, the cost of that cereal might be $0.40, cents, $0.35. Cents. What is all the rest of that money? It's all this wasted layers of distribution. So see, that isn't necessary anymore. So that money gets freed up. And because you are a pioneer of the industry, because you are somebody with a vision and a dream, and you're willing to trade the 7 to 10 hours a week to get the dream, you are going to cash in about that. I want to sketch out how the, how the business really works so you get an idea how the, how the money uh, takes place and, and how you can participate in that. I guess, oh, is this? I think this is, ah, I found the secret. You do it a little different here down under. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how you make money in the business. You, not me, not them, you. How do you make money? Well, you got a dream. You want to trade seven to ten hours a week for two to four years to get your dream. So you sponsor in the business. Okay, you make that commitment. Your sponsor says, all right, I'm going to work with you, train with you. What we're going to do is we're going to help you identify, and I'll use this as an example, six people who you know who have a dream and would be willing to trade seven to ten hours a week to get the dream. Fair enough? Everybody follow me so far? Everybody follow me so far? All right. Just making sure you're not nodding off over there. All right. Now, let's suppose that everybody involved in the business produces a volume this first month that you get involved in the business of $100. Now, notice I didn't say $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000. I said just $100. Why? Because I want to show you. This is very simple, very duplicatable, very doable for everyone. The secret of this business is leverage. We have a lot of people doing a little bit, just seven to ten hours a week. So now if you and each of the six people you introduce into the business produce a volume of $100 the first month, you'd have $700 worth of volume in your organization, right? Now, we have a lot of different companies record, you know, represented here tonight. It's all kind of different pay plans. But I think you're going to find, as an average, what you're going to see in the business is you can make about 10% of what your organization does in volume. So if you had uh, six people plus yourself, everybody did $100, you'd have $700 volume, so you'd make $70 your first month in the business. Now you say, come on, Gage, you brought me here for $70 a month. I can't even wash my Lamborghini for $70 a month. <laughs> I understand. But see, believe me, I understand. <laughs> I know what it's like to keep cars clean. Uh, so, but this is just month number one. And how much, you know, if you're a doctor, and by the way, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant, you know what plan you work under? Trading time for money. 
Just like the bus boy at the Denny's restaurant, the doctor, the lawyer, the accountant, trading hours for dollars, hours for dollars, same thing. So how much did you make when you learned to be an accountant? You probably went to school for 10 years. Well, you learned to be a nurse, when you learned to be a doctor, when you learned to be a lawyer. Think how many, you didn't make anything. So don't be crying about your lousy $70 here, okay? Because you're learning the business. Because look what happens next. Now the second month, we're going to say, we're going to help you help your people. We're going to teach you that duplicatable system to teach your people. And we're going to have them, now we're going to say, they're not quite as bright as you are, okay? They didn't quite get this as good as you did. So they each got five people that they're introducing to the business, all right? Now, of course, it will not work out exactly this way, because I know some of you accountants there are sitting there thinking, okay, this guy might only get four. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm just making an example. So you got the six, and the six each got the five. Well, that would put 30 new people in your organization. Plus, you still have the six, plus you got you. So now, the second month, you'd have 37 people, each doing $100. How much would that be? $37. 3700 right? So 10% of that would be how much? $370. Now you say, okay, $370 is a nice little pin money, but it still isn't going to buy my Lamborghini. I understand that. But that's just month number two. Because all of a sudden, look what happens. We have, there's 36 other people who are, now they're not working for you. They're working for themselves. So they're not calling in sick. They're not stealing paper clips to take home. Okay, none of this stuff. They're all working for themselves, right? Now, what happens when we duplicate the process? And we say, now we're going to teach them how to teach their people. And you say, well, how do you do that? We've got a complete step-by-step -step duplicatable system to show you how to do that. You're going to teach your people how to teach their people. So we say, what if those five each just got four? Now, why I'm doing this? Because I want to be really, really conservative. If I showed you what could really happen, I'm afraid you might swallow your teeth. <laughs> so, I'm going to be very conservative. So now, of the 30 people, each just got four people, now we'd have 120 new people in the organization. They don't work for you, they work for themselves. Seven to 10 hours a week, they're building a dream. 120 plus the 30 plus the six plus you, that's 157 people. Everybody just doing, not 1,000 a month, not 10,000 a month, not 100, 100 lousy dollars a month does $15,700 income or volume, which means your income for month number three would be $1,570. Now all of a sudden we have a little money we could play with something. We could do something with $1,500 a month. Do you know how many bankruptcies would be avoided with $1,500 a month? I would make a bet to say of all the personal bankruptcies, and there's been a record year for personal bankruptcies the last six or seven years in a row. Every single year has broke the record from the year before. And I had someone very close to me did this just a couple years ago. And I'm telling you, I, I, I bet 90% of them would be eliminated with 1500 a month. In fact, 90% of them would probably be eliminated with three or $400 a month. Just this much, the 370 a month, would help most people that they could just start paying down their credit cards instead of paying those minimum balances every month. By the way, do you know how long it takes to pay off your credit card if you're paying the minimum balance every month? 10 years? 20 years? 30 years? 40 years. That's how long it takes. So if you're paying the minimum payment every month, get happy because in 2042, <laughs> you're all paid off. All right, now we're going to go down one more level. Now we're going to say, what if the four people each just work with three people? Now again, everybody's not going to do it this way. Some are going to do it more. Some are going to do it less. But I just want you to see how it works. Now the 120 people each do three people. That give us 360 people plus the 120 plus the 30 plus the six. This comes to how many? Somebody help me. I'm a high school dropout. 500 and something. 517. Is that right? Who's here? Somebody good in math? So 517 times 100 is $51,700 volume in your little business that you got no employees, no office, no overhead. You're running this from your kitchen table or your spare bedroom or your hallway or your closet. 
and you're doing $50,000 volume a month. Do you understand? We can leave this hotel. We can go down the street, Elizabeth Street. We can go onto Oxford Street. We can go to Liverpool. And we can find shop after shop, beauty salon after beauty salon, store after store, dry cleaner, that are not doing $50,000 volume a month. And you're doing it out of a part-time business, 7 to 10 hours a week. Why? Because you're using leverage. Do you get this? Yes! Because, yes. I mean, do you really, really get this? Yes! Because, let me tell you a secret, if you get this, you're not going to sleep very well tonight. <laughs> Believe me, I have spent many a night just laying on the pillow, looking at the ceiling, and seeing six, get the five, get the four, get the three, okay? If you understand this, now we're talking $5,170 a month. Now you know what? I did that in four months. It said one, two, three. What if you didn't do that in four months? What if it took you six months? What if it took you ten months? What if it took you two years? I told you it's a two to four year plan. Okay? And I know what some of you are thinking. All right, but what about if this guy here drops out? <laughs> We got it handled. <laughs> okay? We have a thing called dynamic compression, and so we know when someone drops out, we eliminate their volume, we move up, the next qualified person, and the whole organization moves up. So we got that covered too. Okay? So, but what if you didn't do this in six months? What if you didn't do it in ten months? What if it took you two years? Would it be worth trading seven to ten hours a week for two years to have an extra $5,170 a month? Yes or no? Yes. Hello! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Aren't you glad you got the front row, baby? Now, let me get some more water here. <laughs> and let me ask the question again. Wouldn't it be worth trading seven to ten hours a week for two to four years to get an extra $5,170 a month? Yeah! All right. Thank you. That's a little better. That's what I'm talking about. When you get this, when you really get this, you're not going to sleep tonight. Because you see how a dishwasher from a pancake house could become a multimillionaire. You see how a farmer's wife from Utah could make $80,000 U.S. a month. You see how a woman with two kids and an abusive husband could leave her husband and become a multimillionaire. You see how people on welfare can build complete financial independence. And they can do it with integrity. They can do it with honor. They can do it with helping other people, giving value, contributing. That's what we got to offer here. So see, now you say, okay, all that sounds good. It looks good, but what's the problem? What is the $100? Well, I told you, remember that whole distribution model? We have all of that money that used to get wasted. Now that goes into product research and development. You will see some of the most cutting edge, state of the art products in network marketing that you won't see anywhere else in the world today. Some of the best scientific breakthroughs, some of the best health breakthroughs, some of the best wellness breakthroughs, medicine breakthroughs, herbal breakthroughs have been personal care products, environmentally uh, non-toxic, natural products. Some of the most breakthrough products in all of those categories have been brought to the marketplace because of network marketing, because they have the, the time, the money, the research, the resources to do that kind of research. So what I'm going to ask you is if you're here, you're looking at this for the first time tonight, if you're on the video and you're seeing this for the first time tonight, you have a conversation with the person who invited you here. Have a conversation with the person who, who asked you to watch the video. And they will give you a catalog. They'll give you some brochures. They might have some tapes, some videos, some other things. And you'll find out about these products. What I want you to see tonight, right now, is the big picture. 
how the distribution model works because this is how fortunes are made. People who recognize new paradigms become pioneers in those paradigms and they reach the reward for generations sometimes. So the products are there. Next question is, say, what about the support? I don't know anything about this business. I've never done it before. How can I do the business? Well, that's what the system, we keep talking about a system. In other words, we've got a system where we're going to teach you how to do the business and we're going to teach you how to do the business while you actually do the business. That's why we've got this presentation up on the internet. That's why we have this meeting in this hotel here tonight. You have a sponsorship line. So you see, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to be this guy here. I want to be this guy right at the top because look at all these people he's got under him. Well, you know what? This guy or this gal down here, this person and this person and this person and this person and all the way up to the company, all those people work for that person for free because every one of those people have a vested interest in their business so you want to have a hundred and fifty people between you and the company because they all work for you so they will go with you and they will do two-on-ones with you they will go to your prospects and sit down at a coffee shop and bring a notepad and explain the business to them. They'll conduct meetings like this where you can bring your people and let them see what the business is about. They'll bring in speakers from all over the country and sometimes all over the world so that your, your prospects can see and meet and learn from some of the most successful people in the business. There's conference calls, there's monthly newsletters, there's regional trainings, there's company conventions, there's audios and videos and brochures and booklets and catalogs. There is just hundreds of little tiny things that are all designed for one particular goal in mind, to make you successful. See, you are in business for yourself, but you're not in business by yourself because you have that whole support network of people to, to help you build the business. So, and that don't happen when you open up your own, and you know this, most of you in this room, you know, if you've ever been in the restaurant business, like I have, you know what I'm talking about. If you own a beauty salon, you know what I, if you own a little short store or a shop, you know you don't own the business, the business owns you. And you know if you work for someone else, you're never gonna get wealthy that way. So what we've got tonight is a model that lets you work for yourself, but not by yourself, and it gives you the option to build your future. Now, I'm going to, I want to give you three options if you're thinking about the business. I want to suggest three things to you. Option number one is you say to me, you know what, Randy, that sounds good, it looks good, but you know what, I, I'm one of the one half of one percent. I love my job, and I get paid exactly what I'm worth. Well, you know what? If that's you, I don't know how you still made it this far in the room tonight. But if you did, <laughs> thanks for staying. And then we'd love to have you as a customer. Okay? And what I'd ask you to do is to talk to the person who invited you uh, tonight and ask them about the preferred customer program. Because I told you, we've got some of the most cutting-edge, state-of-the-art products that you're going to find anywhere. And the difference is, if someone in this room or someone who asked you to watch this video told you about them, they will become your personal customer service representative. Somebody, so you're not calling some 800 line that you never met or sending things off and one, you know, going into a store and standing around for 20 minutes trying to get someone to wait on you. You're going to have the personal attention of somebody who knows you and cares about you and will look after your needs personally. Now option number two is what we call the small business. You say, you know what, Randy, this sounds good. I like the idea of being my own boss, and I like the idea, or maybe you're looking at a nutrition company, and you say, well, I'm a chiropractor, massage therapist, an iridologist, or physical therapist, and I want to sell this stuff to my clients. Or maybe you're being presented to a personal products company, and you own a spa, or a gym, or a salon, and you think you could sell them there. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's a cleaning product stuff, and you've got a cleaning service, and you could sell them to your clients. Well, if you're looking to just kind of use the products yourself, buy them at wholesale, and then uh, conversationally market them to your friends, neighbors, and relatives, that's a small business. And if you want to make a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars a month, the small business option would be the one for you. Now, there's one more option, and that's the big business option. Okay? And that's the stuff that we're talking about right now. 
Meaning, you're not looking just to retail a couple products to a friend. You want to build complete financial independence. You got a dream. You're willing to trade that seven to ten hours a week to get the dream, and you're willing to do a two to four year plan, and you want to work to build that dream. That's you want to build an organization like this. That's the big business option. If you're looking for financial independence, then that's the option for you. Now let's bring this all together. I told you what happened when my dream got when my parade got rained on. My dream looked like it was going to die, and I, you know, I drove around in that car. I remember crying in that car, thinking, you know, having to call my family and call my friends, and that 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 it just took so much out of me. And I'll tell you what I did. I went in. Now here I was. I had owned a restaurant. I owned two restaurants in my life. I had been a restaurant manager for years. I went and found a restaurant in South Miami, a little diner. That was open for breakfast and lunch only, way in the southwest, where I didn't know anyone, and I got a job as a breakfast cook, flipping eggs. For two reasons: number one is they would pay me cash every week; they would cash my paycheck, give me the cash because I didn't have a bank account. Because if I had a bank account, the tax people were going to seize it. <laughs> so I needed someone who would pay me cash, and I needed to go get a job. And just make some money to to buy macaroni and cheese, <laughs> and I had to lick my wounds. I just I had to take a couple of months and just regroup. I had lost my self esteem. I had lost my drive. I had lost so much that I, I just didn't even know where to go. So I just I needed that time to to do that. And so I got up every morning at、uh, five o'clock in the morning and took a bus down to South Miami to be there by six o'clock, six fifteen. And flipped eggs every day till 2:30, and I did that all week long. And I did that for for months to kind of just get my sanity back, get my esteem back. And then I went back to this business. And see, I didn't have the money to get back in the business because I still owed tens of thousands of dollars. But I had been in the business once. I had made some money. That's where I got the money to buy the restaurant initially. And what had happened? I had bought. Been with a new company. It was not a stable company. I got some money. I bought my restaurant. That company went out of business. Well, then I was in the restaurant and working eighty hours a week, and then it just, you know, that's what happened. So now, owing fifty thousand dollars, I knew I was never going to pay this off, flipping eggs, and I knew I was never going to pay it off, even if I got a job as a restaurant manager. I mean, do you know how long I'd have to work as a restaurant manager before I could make fifty-five thousand dollars and pay it off? And I owed even more then because I had borrowed a bunch of money just to live. So I said, I've got to get in this business. So I went to someone I knew in the business who knew me from before, and I said, You know me. You know that I, I can work. You know I have a dream. I don't have enough money to get in the business.、I、needed about six hundred dollars to start that business. Rob, he lent me that six hundred dollars. And you know what? Best decision he ever made. <laughs> So I went out, and I didn't do this business seven to ten hours a week. I did this business seven to ten hours a day. I sponsored nine people the first month of the business. Okay, I didn't do six. For those of you who say, "Well, it doesn't work this way," you're right. It didn't. I sponsored nine. <laughs> okay, and at the end of the month, I had sixty people in the business. Month number one. Month number two, I sponsored two more people. So that's a total of eleven. I had about 130 people at the, in my organization at the end of month number two. Month number three, I didn't sponsor anybody. Okay, I just worked with the 11 that I had sponsored in the first two months. The organization went from about 120 people to 360 people. And month number four, I sponsored a couple more people in the business, and the organization was bigger than this one right here. In the fourth month of the business. It wasn't six months, wasn't ten months, wasn't two years, wasn't ten years. It was four months, and I made easily double that money. What you see on the board, I made that in my fourth month of the business. Now, how did I do that? I needed to and wanted to very badly. I was hungry. I had a dream, and I was sick of being broke. And that's what I want you to get out of this is. Do you understand? This is how. Go- There's no limit here. You could sponsor seven. 
You could sponsor eight. You could sponsor nine. You could build this whole organization, build yourself up to get fifty or sixty thousand dollars of your residual income, and then you could go out and you could sponsor five more people and start the whole process all over again. The same exact thing, and you could have a hundred thousand residual going. And you could start with five more, and you could have 150,000 residual going. And if you put five people a year in, and it's very simple, put five serious people in the first year, put five serious people in the second year, put five serious people in the third year, and you will be making a fortune. Put five serious people in the fourth year, you'll have a business worth at least a million dollars, I project. Put five more the next year, and you're going to have a business worth a couple million dollars in five years. Why? Because we've got residual income here. You're building leverage. You're getting this going. And that's what I want you to get. You know, I t and now I've been able to help people all over the world. I told you guys, the platinum people, I talked in the reception about the three kids from, uh, from Norway who came to a program I did in 1998. And they're all multimillionaires now, all three of them. Number one, number two, number three payout in their company. I think of you guys right here in the front row and what you've done the last couple of years. And you know the people I had in London, the, those people there, what they're doing there. I've got people all over the world. Just, they got a dream. They're willing to trade it. We give them a system to follow and they're living their dreams. I think of a lady named Mary in Colorado. Lady I mentioned earlier. Two kids, she's sleeping in her friend's basement because she's on welfare. Divorced, no husband anymore, no one to help pay for her kids. So she was on welfare. And along the way, she got attracted to the business. Along the way, I was able to touch her and touch her life, show her some things, how to follow a duplicatable system. She built an organization making $30,000 U.S. a month. Now, you know, the $30,000 U.S. a month, I'm okay with that because you can get by on that. <laughs> I couldn't get by on that, but I know a lot of people <laughs> could get by on that. But you know what? It's not the 30,000 that gets me so excited about what Mary did. It's what Mary did. It's the example she does for her two kids. Okay? It isn't just the money. It's what, I mean, do you know what that means to those kids to see this woman who was on welfare and just desolate and nowhere to turn and the, the, you meet her today and she is so well dressed and positive in her esteem and she's so confident and she is modeling this behavior and setting such an example for her kids. This is how you raise good kids is you show them how to be successful yourself. You don't tell them grow up and get an educate, grow up and be successful, grow up and make money. You model the behavior for them. Jan Rue, who a lot of you know, I've done programs with Jan, here's a lady, same thing, abusive husband, divorced, three kids I think, became the number one payout in her company. Why? Because she had a dream and she was willing to trade that, that seven to ten hours a week to get a dream in. We've got the model here where you can do that. There is no limit to what you can do. But I don't want to talk about my story anymore. I don't want to talk about Jan's story. I don't want to talk about Mary's story. I don't want to talk about Orion's story. I want to talk about your story. I don't want to talk about my dreams, Jan's dreams. I want to talk about your dreams. You know, go back to where we said earlier. Is there, did this kind of thing, if you did this in six months, a year, two years, is there something on your list of five things you do have or become you could do with the down payment, with what we're talking about there? And if not, how big is your dream? How, uh, you know, how, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to live your dreams? Because if you are, we've got the business that will allow you to do that. So, I got a couple questions for you, and then I'm out of here. I'm looking for one word answers. <laughs> Question number one. Do you believe you're really worthy of success? Yes! Question number two. Are you really willing to live your dreams? Yes! <laughs> And question number three, the last question, and I'm looking for a one-word answer once again, and you better blow the roof off this joint, because that's it, and I'm out of here. Because all of this, all of these numbers, all these things, it all goes back to this one circle. These are not circles. 
Every one of these represents a person. And this circle right here represents you. And this thing only works if you believe in you. If you believe you are worthy, if you believe you have a dream, if you're worth that dream, if you're willing to trade this seven to ten hours a week to live that dream, if you're willing to not let your dream die, you're not willing to sit down and cry, even if you have to sit down, I had to sit down and cry, but you're not willing to give up and let it die, you promise yourself, you make yourself, you commit to yourself to give it one more try. So the last question I'm asking you is based on everything we've talked about tonight. Everything you know about this business now, everything you know about the person who invited you, everything you know about you and what you are and what your dreams are, I need to know, are you willing to give it one more try? Yeah! Thank you. Good night, everybody.